Today, we'll be creating this visual effect in Blender using a simple geometry node setup. I will explain every single step so that by the end of this video, you will know how to turn any object into another. I'm Sina, and this is a Blender VFX tutorial. To get started, we need to place our main objects into separate collections. One of these collections contains our first object, in this case all the models for the train, and the other collection contains the second object. Next to these two collections, let's create a third which will hold the objects we need for the transition effect. This includes a simple plane which we duplicate once by pressing Shift D. Choose one of these planes as a placeholder for the geometry node setup, and assign the other plane to act as the boundary of the transition effect. Even though we'll be hiding this boundary from the final render, it plays an important role in our node setup. And speaking of node setups, we can now head over to the geometry node workspace. The first step is to select the object you have dedicated for the geometry nodes. Go to its modifiers tab, add a geometry node modifier, and press new. Upon creation, Blender will place two nodes in the setup, the group input and the group output nodes. We need both nodes. However, since we're not going to be using the input geometry, which in this case is a flat plane, you can remove it using the side panel. And in its place, add a new input, set its type to collection, and rename it. Then press Shift A to bring up the Add menu and use the search field to bring in a node called Collection Info. Once in place, make sure to set this node to relative so that updating the original objects also updates the geometry nodes. In addition, turn on the separate children option. Finally, use the input field on the geometry nodes modifier to select the collection you want the transition effect to be applied to. Now that we've enabled the collection through geometry nodes, let's add a few nodes to take control of the location and scale of the meshes. To do this, press Shift A to bring up the Add menu, then use the Search field to drop in a Realize Instances node, a Split Edges node, a Scale Elements node, and a Set Position node. The Realize Instances node takes each child of the input collection and treats it as a separate object. The Split Edges node then takes each of these child objects and splits them along their edges. As a result, if we play with the Scale value on the Scale Elements node, we can see that the Scale value is applied to each individual face of every child object. However, all faces are being scaled by the same amount, and this is where the animator plane comes into play, because we want the scale and offset of each face to change as a function of their distance to the animator plane. So to scale each face individually, we need a few more nodes. This includes a position node, an object info node, a vector math node, which we duplicate once by pressing Shift D, a map range node, and finally a simple math node. Set the operation of the first vector math node to subtract, the second one to dot product, and the third math node to power. We now have a basic transition effect. Don't forget that we can use the parameters on the map range node to tweak the length of the transition, both towards the front and the back of the boundary, while the power math node allows us to set the rate at which the faces scale to their final size. In addition, the vector math node with the dot product lets us set the direction of the transition. So if I change the input vector, you can see that the transition flips to the other side of the boundary. With these parameters in mind, we now have a visual effect that already looks good and can be be tweaked for different use cases. Nonetheless, we can still improve the effect by using the offset input on the set position node. The aim of using the offset is to make the individual faces move into position at the same time as they're scaling up to the final size. However, we don't want the movement to simply be along a single axis. Instead, we want each individual face to move along the normal of its final orientation. And to do this, we need a map range node a math node with its operation set to power, a combined XYZ node, a normal node, and finally a vector math node with its operation set to multiply.
And now we have the animation plane affecting both the size and location of our object. As before, the map range node can be used to set the length of the transition effect, while the power math node lets us set the rate of the transition. The normal node gives us a vector perpendicular to each face. Also notice that we're only using the y and z components of the combined node. That's because in our case, the train is along the x-axis and omitting the x value gives us the radial movement we're looking for. We are now only one step away from the final result, and to understand this last step, you need to look close at these two animations. The difference between them is in the orientation of each individual face. It's quite clear that as a visual effect, the bottom animation looks more professional simply because the faces remain aligned with their final orientation as they move into place. Keeping the faces aligned makes the transition look more controlled and deliberate as the faces collectively seem to move in harmony and with purpose. The good thing is that to achieve this, we only need one node, called the Capture Attribute node. This node allows us to turn the location of each face into a new attribute and apply the transition to the entire face rather than separately to each edge. You can see the difference in the results as I mute and unmute this node by pressing the M key. Up to this point, we've been working on a visual effect that makes an object appear or disappear, but we want to make it look as if one object is transforming into another object. So now is a good time to convert the direction of the transition effect into an input for the entire geometry node setup. To do this, we simply need to attach the vector dot product node to the group input node. This will create a new input for our setup, which we should give a proper name. This input allows us to set the direction of the transition without having to change any of the nodes. And by now, you might have already guessed that by using the two inputs of the geometry node setup, that is, the collection and the direction, we can make any object transition into another object. To make this happen, we simply need to duplicate the geometry node object, set its collection to the one that contains our second object, and reverse the direction. Now if we go ahead and play the animation, we have a visual effect that transforms the text into an object, or the object into text. With both objects now in place, you can tweak the parameters until you're happy with the final result. Now if you found this video helpful and want to learn more, click here for another tutorial. As for this one, thank you for watching and until next time, take care.